So we are here with uh, Professor Will Hapor, uh, formerly of uh, Princeton University. Well, I'm still at Princeton yeah, University. Okay, good, mm -hmm. very good. Um, also, they say in the internet, former Trump advisor. Mm -hmm. And uh, we would like to a little bit hear about your work, um, your uh, achievements, what you think about climate change, maybe also a little bit, maybe we could also talk a little bit about your time in the, in the White House. Mm -hmm. um, so my first uh, question uh, would be, uh, what is this all about with this climate change and how do you even get got to this topic of climate change? Mm -hmm. Because I understand that in your uh, early years of your academic career you were not doing uh, climate no, research. No, no. Well, I can give you a brief history of how that happened. I, I got into it in a very uh, uh, circuitous way. I used to, when I was younger, work for the government uh, for the Department of Defense, uh, Defense during uh, the summers. Mm -hmm. And so in 1982, in the first years of uh, Star Wars, uh, I was at a classified summer study and mm -hmm. we were talking about the possibility of using high power lasers to intercept attacking missiles, mm -hmm. Russian missiles. and. Um, you know, we had pretty high power lasers then. We had five megawatt lasers, but the problem was to get that power onto a missile that was, mm -hmm. uh, you know, 100 kilometers away in the air. Mm -hmm. And so the, the laser beam would have to go through the air, and by the time it would reach the missile, it would be broken up into hundreds of little filaments. So you start aiming at it with what you think is a rifle bullet, and when it gets there, it's birdshot, you know? Mm -hmm. So no single beam had enough power to cause any damage. Mm -hmm. And this was uh, due to the little patches of warm and cool air in the atmosphere mm -hmm. as the light would go through, the warm air would go a little faster, that part of the beam, and the cold air would go a little slower. So by the time it reached the target, it was very wrinkled and it wouldn't focus. And instead, it broke up into these filaments I mentioned, speckles they mm -hmm. would call them. And astronomers knew all about this because you have the same problem when you're looking at stars when they come down into a telescope, which is big, same size as you would use for a high power laser. Mm -hmm. Instead of getting a nice point image of a star, you get hundreds of little star images, you know, speckled images. Mm -hmm. And so you can't tell whether this image, the speckle here is another star or is it, uh, you know, just part of the same star that's been broken up. Mm. And astronomers knew that you could correct for this um, if the star were bright enough, you could measure how much the wave from the star had been wrinkled. And then instead of using a perfect mirror, you would uh, impose the same wrinkle, but with the opposite sign on the mirror. They call it a rubber mirror. Mm. And then when the wrinkle wave bounced on the rubber mirror, once it would come back and it was perfect and then mm. you would get one star on the photographic mm. plate. And, uh, and this is how so you it was called adaptive go. optics, it, yes. it, adaptive optics and it was it really did work but only for a few stars in the sky mm. that were sufficiently bright mm. that you could get the signal to noise you mm. needed. And so uh, we all knew this at the time of this meeting in 1982 and I said well I know how to uh, make an artificial star anywhere in the sky. It doesn't have to be the bright, it doesn't have to be serious, the dog star or something like mm -hmm. that, because there is a layer of sodium atoms at 100 kilometers overhead everywhere around the world, in Vienna and Princeton, <laughs> Los Angeles and Moscow. Mm -hmm. And um, there's so many sodium atoms that if you were to shine a laser that's tuned to the sodium atom absorption, you could produce a very bright yellow star, just as bright as any other star in the sky, and you could mm -hmm. use that, and you could point it wherever you like, including the direction of the missile that's attacking you. Mm. And um, most people at this meeting, that it was a classified meeting, had never heard of the sodium layer, and they didn't know very much about lasers and uh, optics, and mm. 